the history of the Church of St. Peter in Valley dates back to the earlier times, when Christianity spread also in the pagan town called Farnum Fortunae and transformed slowly the town's framework. In fact, the present construction was built on the ruins of an early Middle Ages church, which was not far from the Valum, that is, the Latin name for the boundary wall of the Roman town. Probably this is why the church was called Invale. The church was destroyed and rebuilt many times over the centuries, but it always remained upon the same ancient site and was always known as the Church of Saints Peter and Paul in Valle. It was built in 1610. And here we are with this little masterpiece in the Marche Baroque style, designed by the Roman architect Gian Battista Cavagna, who also worked in the sanctuary of the Holy House of Loreto. Before crossing the main entrance, you've certainly noticed the bare façade in the form of a hut with its facing bricks. Sure, and while entering, I was surprised by a spectacular display of gold, stuccos and polychrome marbles that I did not expect to see. Cavagna had originally designed a richer and more elegant façade, entirely faced with stones, but his design was not respected, probably because the architect died a few years after the beginning of the works, which were then followed by others. The layout of the internal spaces resembles that of the Church of St. Mary in Vallicella in Rome, the seat of the Congregation of the Oratory, the society founded by St. Philip Neri at the end of the 16th century, which inspired the development of many congregations in Italy. One of the first congregations was that of Fano, founded in 1598 by the noble Girolamo Gabrielli. He was the major financial sponsor of the works of St. Peter in Valle, the new seat of Fano's oratorians. As the mother church of St. Mary in Vallicelli in Rome, St. Peter in Valle features a Latin cross plan with a high dome at the intersection of the two limbs. Yes, there's a single wide hall with a barrel vault and with open side chapels. It was meant to help the worshippers in their religious meditation. And the division in naves and aisles is lacking. If you look around, you may notice that the altars are almost all devoid of ornaments. But once, it was not like this. It was not like this when in 1795 the art historian Luigi Lanzi defined the church as a gallery of rare paintings. In those days, each chapel had one or more paintings commissioned by Fano's most prominent families to prestigious artists of the Italian 17th century. Today it's possible to admire the altars in their bygone splendor, at least virtually. Our tour's first stop is at the main chapel. Paid by the Marcolini family, the main chapel hosts the Delivery of the Keys to St. Peter, a 19th-century copy by Carlo Maggini, a painter from Fano. And the original painting? You may view it on your tablet. It was painted by Guido Reni in 1626. It's still perfectly kept, but at the Louvre Museum in Paris. In fact, it was stolen by the Napoleonic agents in 1797. By comparing this copy with the original, the high quality of the original painting stands out, with the cold, first daylight that floods the scenery and enhances the range of colors, the different rosy cheeks and the depth of red, okra and blue colors. Indeed, Guido Reni was a leading painter of the 17th century Bolognese school, much requested in Fano, besides the fact that he'd also worked in the church of Vallicella in Rome. In other words, he had all the right qualifications for being chosen 
by Girolamo Gabrielli, who was in charge of the selection of the artists. The homogeneous illumination, combined with the neat scenery of the painting, reflect the classicist style of the painter from Bologna, who contrasted sharply with the dramatic themes painted in those same years by Caravaggio in Rome. The subject is focused on the words said by Jesus to St. Peter, words that grant the saint the primacy of Pope. Words that are also written in the Gospel of Matthew. I will give to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Moreover, the side paintings, which represented two miracles of the Apostle, were also dedicated to St. Peter. On the left, there was the resurrection of Dorcas by Matteo Loves, a pupil of Guercino. On the right, the healing of the lame man by the painter Simone Cantarini from Pesaro. And it was here, in St. Peter in Valle, that Cantarini became fascinated by the poetic disposition of Guido Reni, and therefore decided to continue his training in Bologna at Reni's workshop. However, they had a difficult relationship, which led to the breaking off of all relations between the two painters. Luigi Lanzi was lucky enough to see the masterpiece of Reni next to that of Cantarini, and about the latter he wrote, It's a painting that even if cited close to St. Peter by Guido, it's not overwhelmed by it. Although less refined, it's rather intense and certainly more effective. I agree with him. You may discern in this painting a restless humanity, more real, reminiscent of the works of Caravaggio, and probably also influenced by studying the painter Giovan Francesco Guerrieri. We will soon talk about this painter too. Now, let's go to the first chapel on the left side of the main entrance. Under the patronage of Girolamo Gabrielli, Guido Reni's Annunciation was housed here in the centre. Look at the painting on your tablet. The figures are depicted against a foggy background and the tactile values of the materials emerge full of light. The heavy clothes, the tender petals, and the soft feathers. Furthermore, the light sculpts the faces, making them look like delicate ivory statues. This painting represents the special, intimate devotion to the Virgin Mary, cultivated by the Oratorians and by the same Gabrielli. To the right of the Annunciation was situated the flight into Egypt by the painter Giuliano Gabuzio from Fano. To the left, the St. Joseph's Dream by the painter Giovan Francesco Guerrieri from Fossombrone in the style of Caravaggio. In the Annunciation by Reni, the composition is well balanced, developed through vertical lines of figures that give a sense of stability, while in the painting by Guerrieri, the diagonal lines prevail, thus bringing a restless dynamism. Here, the angel comes from above, but Joseph has not yet woken up. And if the Gospels didn't tell us what happens next, we might still be wondering if he will ever wake up. Guerrieri has captured a moment in the dead of night, a sudden flash in the darkness to illuminate few objects of everyday life. The poor furniture, the dirty nails, and the carpenter's tools. We find the intervention of the painter Guerrieri in all the paintings in the next chapel, dedicated to St. Charles Borromeo and commissioned by the Petrucci family. In the dome, in the middle, the apotheosis of St. Charles. On both sides, the story of his life. The altar displayed the vision of St. Charles Borromeo. Also in this painting, the objects of everyday life emerge from the darkness, captured by the candlelight. 
However, the contrast between the lights and shades in the paintings on either side is less brutal. The miracle of healing the man born blind and St. Charles and the noble Petrucci, in memory of the day in which Borromeo came to Fano and the Petrucci family, dressed in rags, met him at Ponte Metauro, the Metauro Bridge. The third chapel is that of the Marcolini family, and it housed in the middle St. Paul resuscitating Eutychus by the painter Lorenzo Garbieri from Bologna. On the sides, the conversion and the martyrdom of St. Paul by Antonio Viviani, an artist we'll later take into consideration. Now, let's move to the other side of the church. The third chapel on the right was owned by the Marcolini family. The dramatic wooden crucifix is the work of Pietro Liberi, an artist from the Veneto region. The deposition and the ascension, which was situated on the sides, are works by Alessandro Vitali, a pupil of Federico Barocci. The second chapel is that of the Alavolini family, and it's dedicated to St. John the Baptist. In the dome, you may see three frescoes showing the saints preaching by the Mannerist painter Gian Giacomo Pandolfi from Pesaro, who is also the author of the canvases on the sides. The crowded nativity of John the Baptist. And his gruesome decapitation. The centre was dominated by St. John in the desert by Guercino, from the Emilia region, portrayed in 1661. Simply wonderful. The twilight draws the outline of the saint's vibrant body. In the desert dryness, a few vivid landscape details emerge. The young sheep cropping the grass, the green spots of vegetation, and the gushing water to recall the baptism of Jesus. Although the composition Balance is influenced by his fellow countryman Guido Reni, Guercino is more faithful to the life with his vital and warm shades. Under the patronage of the Euphraduce family, the first chapel commemorates St. Philip Neri. On the dome, you may still see the narratives of his life. The altar was adorned with a Madonna and child appearing to the saint by the painter Luigi Garzi from Pistoia. Now it's time to raise your eyes to the ceiling and look at the bright frescoes. They were made between 1618 and 1620 by the painter Antonio Viviani da Urbino, also called Il Sordo, the deaf man, following a disability caused by being in contact with the humidity of the frescoes. He was already sick when he started working in the Church of St. Peter in Valle, and he died at 60, just a month after the completion of his frescoes. The reason why Viviani had been chosen by Fano's oratorians was that he was a pupil of the painter Federico Barocci from Urbino, an artist much considered by St. Philip Neri. And among Barocci's followers, he was the only expert in wall painting. The colour range is exceptional, with bright and changing colours. The depicted figures, with their diagonal and always dynamic poses, crowd the architectural and naturalistic landscapes full of light, colours and movement. The frescoes illustrate life scenes of Saints Peter and Paul, to whom the church is entitled. In the counter facade on the left, St. Peter meets Jesus and asks him, My Lord, where are you going? Jesus replies, I'm going to Rome to be crucified again, thus referring to the future martyrdom of the Apostle. On the right, 
St. Paul frees the island of Malta from the snakes. In the barrel vault, a dynamic crescendo from the touching embrace between the saints Peter and Paul to the impressive realism of St. Peter's crucifixion, who ascends triumphantly a golden sky in the following panel. The cycle is resumed in the vault of the main chapel, entirely dedicated to St. Peter. On the left, Christ holds out his hand to the saint while walking on water. In the middle, the apostle challenges Simon Magus, the heretic, who falls heavily after a trial of levitation. On the right, an angel releases the saint from the prison. And once again, an annunciation by the deaf man, situated on the high altar to represent the oratorian's worship of the Virgin Mary. The Baroque style in the Church of St. Peter in Valley is airy and full of light. It calls forth a charming choir of angels. And indeed, the angels here are so many. The plastic art decorations inside the church were carried out at different times. In 1619, the artist Pietro Solari from Rome decorated with stuccos the side walls and barrel vault with classical style motifs. The dome, finished only at the end of the 17th century, was decorated by Lauro Buonaguardia, an artist from Bologna who got married in Fano. In the pendentifs, tondos with Old Testament prophets. In the drum, four large angels that alternate with luminous windows. And in the golden conch, sculpted and painted angels. Now go back to the nave and look at the dome from a distance. You'll notice a balcony from which the statues of the Virgin Mary and the Apostles peep out with their faces turned skywards. The combination of artistic techniques, virtuoso displays and theatrical, astonishing effects are the main features of the Baroque style. The purpose of the poet is to stupefy wrote the Baroque author Giambattista Marino. And this dome has indeed stupefied everybody. In the arms of the transept, there are two choirs with 18th and 17th century organs, decorated in 1710 by Giorgio Ferretti, a sculptor from Como. The graceful and slim angels play life-size musical instruments widely used in the Baroque music repertoire, the violoncello, the chitarra battente, the arch lute, the natural horn, the oboe, the English flute, and the buccina. St. Philip Neri used to say, it's important to join the pleasantness of spiritual music to serious exercises made by serious people. And of course, the music always enlivened the oratory practice. The restoration works in the Church of St. Peter in Valley date back to a recent age. In 1953, after the ravages of World War II, the church's custos, keeper, sent a letter to the superintendent which said, This temple, that according to many art lovers and experts is the most beautiful in the Maki region, is in terrible condition for many years now. I would be immensely grateful for your help in saving it from ruin. In the following decades, partial restoration works were carried out in the architectural construction, as well as in the pictorial and plastic art decorations, often threatened by the high level of humidity. The last restoration works, executed thanks to the patronage of the municipality of Fano and the EU funds for the Marche region, have enabled the restoration of the Alavolini, Ufreducci and Gabrielli families' chapels, the flooring and the complementary stones, as well as the implementation of safety measures for the high altar and other structural interventions. In 2015, the renovated St. Peter in Valley was open to the public to show all its white and gilt treasures.
And if this visit to the Gallery of Rare Paintings was not only a virtual tour, we're not asking you to go to France, where are kept the delivery of the keys to St. Peter by Reni and St. John by Guercino, but in the Palazzo Malatistiano of Fano, the seat of the Municipal Picture Gallery, the Pinoteca Civica, which is just a few steps away from here. On the first floor of the Palazzo, you may admire the majority of the paintings that used to adorn the altars of the church, such as the Annunciation by Reni, the Healing of the Lame Man by Cantarini, the Canvases by Guerrieri, and many other artworks. These masterpieces are all there, waiting for you. <laughs>